did you know that 40% of the world lack basic sanitation, while in America we throw away 49 million diapers a day? Did you know that 1.6 billion people have no electricity? Yet we have it in all of our homes. Did you know that by far most of the people in the world do not own a car? Yet one third of American families own at least three cars. Did you know that one in seven children worldwide, that's 158 million children, go to work every day just to survive? Did you know that Americans spend annually, more annually on trash bags than nearly half of the world does on all of its goods? I think these verses apply to us. I want you to look at it again. Instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be arrogant or to set their hope on the uncertainty of wealth, but on God, who richly provides us with all things to enjoy. Over the next couple weeks, as we get into Christmas and we get focused on materialism many times, maybe more than we ever are and we should be, I want to challenge us as a church to learn to be rich. I want to talk to us about how in the world can you and I be rich, not only at Christmas time when we're focused on the riches of this world, but all throughout our life, because God wants us not to be rich in this present age, but He wants us to be rich. The question is, how in the world can you and I be rich? I want you to go back to the text again. We're just going to keep hammering at it. I want you to look at it. Instruct those who are rich in the present age not to be arrogant. So let me tell you how to be rich. Here's how we be rich. You be rich by, first of all, stop being arrogant. We have to stop being arrogant. You know, rich people can grow arrogant, can't we? We walk into our church, it's chilly. We expect it to be climate controlled. We expect nice things in life. We expect to have two cars. We expect to have electricity on the morning. We expect to have the basic necessities of life. And many times we can grow arrogant when we have these things. The definition of arrogance is exposed, or exaggerated or disposed to exaggerate one's self-worth. And many times what happens when, when we're blessed with material things like we are here in this country, we grow arrogant. We think, I deserve this. I deserve the new iPod. I deserve a flat screen TV. I deserve a big house. I deserve these cars. I deserve these things. And so it's very easy for us to grow arrogant. Now let me give you the arrogance test of a few things that I think we can look at and say, and look at ourselves and say, am I have I grown arrogant? First of all, here's it. Arrogance test number one, never satisfied. Never satisfied. If you have your Bibles, look in Luke chapter 12 for just a moment. In verse 16, Luke chapter 12, verse 16. I hope you brought your Bibles. Jesus is telling a parable. Verse 16, then he told them a parable. A rich man's land was very productive, he thought to himself. Well, what should I do? Since I don't have anywhere to store my crops. I will do this, he said. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life is demanded of you. All the things you have prepared, whose will they be? That is how it is with the one who stores up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. You see, one, one, of, the, one of the tests of, of when we've grown rich as far as this world and we've grown arrogant is we're never satisfied. Well, when you look at this parable, if you, if you don't mind circling your Bible, you might want to circle the word I or I'll or my because it's all over the place. It's all about this guy. He said to himself, what shall I do since I don't have anywhere to store my crops? 
Are these really his crops? I will do this. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods there. Then I'll say to myself, you have many goods stored up for many years. Take it easy, eat, drink, and enjoy yourself. You see, one thing, when we grow arrogant, one of the tests that, that shows we grow arrogant is we're never satisfied. This guy was not satisfied. He was already, Jesus said he was a rich man. He was already rich in this present age. But then he had a good year, and so it was like, I got to tear down and build bigger. I guarantee you that if God had let him live, guess what he would have done the next year if he'd had a bumper crop? I got to tear down these barns and build bigger. I got to have bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You see, one of the tests of when we think we're rich it, 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 with, the present, with the riches of this world is we grow arrogant. We always got to have more. If I could just get a little bit more, then I could be happy. That's not the attitude of a rich person. Let me give you another arrogance test, and that is this. It's me focused. If you go back a couple cha uh, chapters, Luke chapter 8 for just a second, verse 14, Jesus is telling the parable of the sower. And uh, he's talking about uh, a man spreading the seed on the ground. I'm not going to go through the entire thing, but here's what he talks about one of them. Verse 14, Luke 8, 14. As for the seed that fell among thorns, these are the ones who, when they heard, go on their way and are choked with worries, riches, and pleasures of life and produce no mature fruit. See, rich people get me focused. They get choked with the worries of this world. They, they worry when they don't have the newest cars. They worry when they don't have the larger homes. They, don't worry, they, they worry when they, have the, they don't have the latest electronic gadgets. Rich people who are rich in the things of this world, they get choked with riches. Their focus is, how can I get more money? How can I buy more things? How can I have more and more and more? It's all about me. How can I have a good time? What can I do to make me feel good? That is part of arrogance. It's me focused. Let me give you another arrogance test. Stingy. In Luke chapter 18, verse 18, we, we, there's a story. If you want to flip over just for a few minutes to so Luke chapter 18, 10 chapters down the road. There, there's a story about a rich young ruler. Okay, This guy was rich as far as material possessions. He comes up to Jesus and he asks him, how can I have eternal life? If you look at verse 22, Jesus says this, you still lack one thing, sell all that you have and distribute it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, then come and follow me. Now, now some people look at this and they say, oh, we, we get to heaven by doing good works. That's not the point of what Jesus was saying. Jesus knew, that this man was telling him that he had kept all the commandments and he was so good, but Jesus knew that there was one thing this guy loved more than anything else, his money.